So as a UX strategist, as you mentioned, a main area of focus is to ensure the UX meets business needs. Yep. In an agency setting, it can sometimes be hard to extract those business needs if clients have trouble articulating specific and measurable goals. Yep. What are some ways you've worked with stakeholders to overcome this in the early phase of a project? Yeah, so I think just trying to um, articulate out what success looks like for them, just as a baseline, and they may not always have the answer to that, but it generally always covers, so most people are looking at revenue, their top line revenue. Does what the customer, uh, is what the, they're doing actually leading to driving more purchase patterns, driving more subscriptions, or driving more engagement, with, which will then lead to more purchasing? So that's generally where their head is gonna be at. They may not be able to articulate it in that way, but that's really what they're, they're looking for. So when you as a user experience designer think about how you roll up into that, the way that I like to say it is it's a, it's a checklist. It's a customer success checklist. And uh, for Pentair, for example, the way we look at it is like there's an onboarding checklist. Are they able to connect the device properly and get through that in the most low friction way possible? The next part of that in the application is are we serving them the right content um, to make them say, oh my gosh, I didn't know I could take a water test. Oh, I should be taking a water test, which will then lead to revenue. So for your projects, for example, look at like the revenue line or the engagement metric and then work backwards to make your user experience checklist from there. And uh, one thing that I think is a good discipline that all of us should be thinking about is even if you're working on a single page or like a checkout experience or something like that, always think about the broader customer experience because your customer, their relationship is, you know, we basically, there's three terms that we've all heard about. There's UI, which is the widgets and the buttons that we work on in Adobe XD or Sketch or et cetera. There is the general user experience, which is the usability of like whatever workflow we're working on. And then there's the customer experience, which is their experience with the brand. And that's really what customers care about and what they pay for. So as you're designing your workflow, Think about like, well, where are they coming in and what are we telling them? And what's, uh, how can I and my designs make their experience as frictionless as possible to make sure that they achieve that value and then ultimately pay money? Awesome. So like, for example, if it's a, it's a completely new product, we would want to maybe identify, like, how do you plan to monetize this product first and then kind of work backwards from there? Yeah, or what does success look like? And maybe it's not monetization in the beginning. Maybe it, they're looking for a certain engagement number, like usage. But normally, whatever it is, it's like, I want users to spend more time in my application. Okay, well, that's great. But why should they do that? What are you telling them at the top of the funnel or in the very beginning that makes them think that, and then how can we articulate that through our design work? Sounds good. And um, so I'll move on to another question. So one thing UX leaders also do is uncover new value with new kinds of experiences. So very related to, you know, starting with those metrics. What design or other methods help you uncover these opportunities? So just ask that one more time. When you're saying uncover new value, what do you mean? Maybe. Uh, clarify um, a so new value could be um, offering new opportunities for clients to um, or customers or new new ways to bring value to the company. So whether it's uh, yeah. new services. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think that um, like, so generally I think when um, clients engage us as an agency, they're thinking oftentimes a lot about like good design and they don't necessarily know what that entails. And I always like, like to think of us as UX designers to be more broad thinkers around not more than just pixel pushing and making sure that the design is good because that is a discipline in itself and that's really great. But then thinking more broadly around like, well, who is using this design? So when I think about that in strategy, we think about like, who are the different personas? So for Pentair, for example, uh, one of the things that we did was looked at like, do you know who your users are? Who are the different personas and who is that ICP? We talk about ICP a lot. That's ideal customer profile. And if they're not thinking about that, then that's more value that we can add um, as an agency to help them solve for that. 
And then moving forward from there, just thinking about it more strategically, how do these designs actually roll up in a empirical measurable way to success? So for, based on what we just talked on previously, do they have like analytics and tooling in place to measure the user behavior along the way? If they don't, that's another value add that we as an agency can add that rolls up into our design work. That's great. And um, I think, you know, in UX design, we think a lot about personas, but I think using ideal customer profile is much more relatable to business owners. So that's a really great point. Yeah. Um, and so the last part is, um, so I want to return to evangelizing UX. As a UX leader, it's important to not only um, find opportunities and define experiences, but it's also important to evangelize those ideas to other stakeholders and executives in order to influence them. And you did show us that with your deck. So how do you typically prepare for these types of meetings and presentations? Yeah, I, I would, um, I would encourage, so again, I think UX designers as uh, the muscle that we've built, we are constantly presenting our work, right? Um, as you start doing that higher up the chain to, to leadership, I think there's like a different muscle to be exercised, which is again, as I started with storytelling, because that's really what they care about. It's like, what is the story you wanna to tell to these stakeholders and how are you gonna tell it differently than just presenting your design work? So oftentimes a mistake that I'll see a lot is designers will, uh, at the at the, at the low end, they'll do a real estate tour. They'll be like, yes, yeah, so I put the navigation here. I put the call to action here. Here's like the menu items. They like typically executives and leadership as you're presenting it through, an, uh, through the organization, they don't care about those things, right? Like, yeah, they may want to see a screenshot of how it looks again, like before and after, um, but going through the detail isn't that important. What's more important is, is uh, talking to them about like, here's the picture that we want to paint to the future. In order for us to get there, we have to do these set of things in terms of like design, um, research, testing, all of these other, other moving parts. And then finally, like uh, once we get this design and we get it all implemented, here's how we're going to measure success. So in terms of evangelizing, just think about it in a more high level way. And really, you know, every time you do a presentation, um, just think about it like, you are a, you're almost creating a user experience for the person you're presenting to. And anytime you, you design something, we're always thinking about things like, well, who's the persona? Who's the ICP? How do I communicate with the user in a way that's going to be effective? It's the same thing with the executive. So for example, when I'm, when I'm pitching to leadership, like I know the personality type enough to know, like they don't care about all these nuances. They just want to like get to like, how are we going to measure success here? And what is the overall story? It's the same way if you're presenting to like a board, like you're going to present at another level, or if you're presenting to an engineer, they're, all they care about is like implementation. So you're going to talk about handoff, what resources they need to know, what APIs potentially that they need to, to use. So always think about the person that you're presenting to, the audience that you're presenting to, and then switch up the presentation and how you formulate uh, the narrative, because not all people are the same, just like not all users are the same. Right, and that's a really great point. I really like how, um, you know, for us, yeah, as you said, we are used to just focusing on the design aspect, working most with product owners potentially, but if we do work with an executive, we, that's a really great thing to think about instead is um, more of the metrics or just high level how the change will um, help. Yeah, and there's nuances to that, you know? I mean, Cameron, Cameron will tell you, we work on Talent Sky together. Sometimes it's like verbal jujitsu is like what I like to call it. You have to like be really careful how you step around your words um, because at the end of the day, we are serving a client. We're there to serve them. And so we have to be a partner with them. And so we can't like force our ideas on them. We have to be collaborative. Um, but just keep, keeping in mind, how do we make sure that we, um, you know, uh, be advocates and champions for great design, measured design um, moving forward in a way where the client is gonna feel like they're a part of that journey. So you just think through that as you're um, thinking about the narrative you're painting as you talk to these stakeholders. That's really great. And that's really aligned with um, how we like working with our clients. We do like to be very collaborative and we always think of ways we could create more transparency, but uh, even the way we say things is really important. So thanks for pointing that out. Sure. 
Um, so what other advice would you give to designers who are new to presenting to executives? I know you touched on a few of these points earlier. And what, how is this different from presenting to internal and smaller audiences? I know you did touch on that, but is there any other advice you'd want to give? I just think like a broader advice is like, I think for, um, for a lot of designers, the, one part of it is like, the competence of being a tactician, a really good design tactician. And that's things like understanding the usefulness of design systems, engineering handoff, using tools, um, being able to you know, present your work. Um, but as you, I think, grow as a more mature designer, you are going to have to like understand a little bit more about product, like the general product and customer ex experience. So the first part of that is understanding that what you're designing is part of a bigger experience. And a lot of designers don't really touch the marketing end of things or they don't look at the messaging, but you have to understand that's the user's first touch point with the product. So if marketing is saying one thing and product and user experience is saying something else, that's already a disconnect, right? And so, you know, I think as you start uh, improving as a designer, thinking about the broader customer experience picture. And then even more than that, trying to understand like the business terminology that matters to executives, because um, it's, this is my personal opinion. I think that generally user experience designers, after a while, they're gonna be, they morph into product people. They have to, I think in order to, because if we really care about making the user successful, we have to look at the entire stack and we have to look at the entire product and what drives the product. Yeah, of course. They have users have to be able to pay money to keep that product going. Um, so learning that business language is going to be a muscle that you should probably start exercising. That's really great. And um, one way we've tried to bring this more into the conversation is build these questions into our early discussions with the client. So actually, we we previously had a kickoff deck where we would ask, you know, what are your business goals? What are some what is, what does success look like? But I do see opportunities to dig into those a little bit more and also um, further beyond that, just, you know, if we need more time to figure that out with the client. Yeah, for sure. And do you have any other tips for collaborating smoothly with executives? Um, yeah, you know, I would just say don't, th don't take things personally. Um, oftentimes when you're working with executives, they'll say things, um, you know, they'll... Uh, sometimes be a little bit mean and just hard edged. And I just, again, I wouldn't take it too personally. That's just the way that they are. Oftentimes they don't have all the context that you do when you're working on a project. So, um, you know, they'll be like, well, why is it this way? And sometimes it's valid and sometimes it's not. I would just say, stay humble and see if there's truth in what they're saying. And if there is, take it back to your team uh, or take it back in the design work that you're doing and improve upon it. But um, certainly don't, I mean, you should always be confident and stay in your ground, but you know, just don't argue for the sake of arguing either. <laughs> That's really great. And again, I think the executives would really appreciate our attitude, our attitude with that and then probably build even more trust between the two groups. Well, that's all the questions. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's, gonna... I would say that's absolutely right. I mean, I think user experience is one of these things where we are providing user experience to our clients as well. And so, you know, part of it is just personality and, and trying to, and, and people management and all that kind of stuff. So that's it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Prakash. Um, that was all the questions I had, but um, we do have a few minutes left. So if anyone else has any other questions, I do want to open this up to the floor. So um, does anyone have a question to ask Prakash around this? I'll go since I might want to share this with my students. Um, I'm curious for like, you know, for younger designers who are sort of interested in going through this user experience path, like what kind of just general advice would you want to give? For, um, for younger designers, like, I would actually trust you more than I would myself. <laughs> but I mean, I think, you know, Generally, when people are just starting out, I, um, I, always I always tell them, even if they're not, like, for example, I'll work with a lot of designers that aren't, for example, at a job yet. Um, I usually have them design something that they use a lot and they feel could be made better. So first and foremost, just get in the practice of improving a system, right? 
And um, that will obviously include what tools you use. And hopefully that will take you on an exploration to how you can get better and more efficient with those tools. So the first part is like get better at solving problems. And then in terms of your presentation and your work, you know, I would also practice the mu a muscle of doing these like pinup sessions or, or um, poster board sessions where you're actually working with people to, um, to showcase your work and be open to be critiqued because I don't know if it was like this for you, Chrissy Lynn, but for me, like it took me a while to get comfortable being critiqued for my work. And because uh, it's not something that we like, we always like to kind of, I think designers have this thing where we're like, we have the answer, we put it out there and hopefully everyone is gonna love it. But um, that's oftentimes not the case and it's an iterative process. So being able to put it in front of people and, and, uh, and get feedback and then, you know, just build up thicker skin is, I think this is also important. So that's where I would start. Then obviously you'll evolve in uh, through the, some of the other things that I talked about. Um, but yeah, subscribe to Christy Lynn and watch all of her videos. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> or Prakash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our two stars. Awesome. Well, we have two minutes left. Any other questions from others? I had one if, if no one else did. Go ahead. Prakash, walk me through, um, I'd love to get your take on, uh, you know, the setup would be you spend all this time preparing for that, that big presentation with the C-suite team. And, you know, you get literally three, four minutes into your, you're barely even past your summary slide. And then just left hook, you know, some, some executive just takes it a completely different direction. What would be your one or two tips on how to bring that back? Um, either if we're in client meetings and it just gets derailed, like what's the best way to not, just to bring that back in like tactically when, when we're already in those intimidating situations? Yeah, I think, um, I think, well, I think there's no easy answer for that. And this is, and this has definitely happened to me. I know it's happened to you as well. Um, I think sometimes the left hook is a necessary punch for you to take to have a broader discussion about concerns that aren't being addressed and aren't going to be addressed in the deck that you're presenting. So sometimes I do think it actually makes sense to address, to derail what you had planned and just alleviate those concerns so you can build a better relationship for the future. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes you have the executive type that just likes to cause trouble and, to, and likes to derail the meeting. Um, and I think that just being mindful of just saying, look, we have this much time. It is my goal to make sure to get through these slides to this end, right? Always have a goal. And that's why I always believe in an agenda. Like, here's what we're going to cover today. Even if it's not articulated in the deck, before you ever get started, just say like, here's like the purpose of why we're meeting and what we plan to cover. And, um, and then just bring it back to that. And it's, I think it's okay to be a little bit bullish and interrupt and say like, look, I totally understand your point. I want to make sure that we get through this today. If everyone agrees with that, let's go ahead. And sometimes you won't always win that battle, but I do think it, it does. It's like, it's a dance. You kind of have to be discerning around whether to address the concern or keep going. Yep. Like it. Sorry, it was muted. Awesome. We definitely get opportunities at Impeccable to work with all types of, um, executives and people. So really good tips there. All right. Well, um, we're at time. So thank you again so much, Prakash, for sharing um, all of this with us today. And um, sure. we'll post this uh, as much as we can. And yeah, thank you, everyone. And yeah. thanks for joining. Thanks for your time, everyone. Thanks for listening.